in this video, we're going to be assembling the Z drive parts. In our previous video, we'd assembled the bed for the frame and all of the Z rods uh, to allow the bed to kind of slide up and down smoothly, and we got that taken care of. Now we're going to use the uh, we're going to install the motion control parts. So to do that, we're going to need a couple printed pieces, some nuts and screws, bolts, and uh, some motors. So to start off, I've printed out two of these Z nut mounts. These are the pieces that are going to hold the brass nuts that come with your lead screws. We've got two Z motor mounts, which will hold the two Z motors. I've got a screwdriver and an Allen driver uh, for the screws that I have, and those are going to be an M3x10 uh, M3 screw, uh, some 2020 hammer nuts for M5 screws, and some M5x10 screws. I also have a ruler that's uh, 30 centimeters or 12 inches or so here. We're going to use that to measure the spacing of the motors between the lower Z rod mounts to make sure that they're centered, and that helps kind of balance the weight of the bed so that everything goes up and down nice and smoothly. And finally, we've got two Z-axis stepper motors. These are NEMA 17 motors that have integrated lead screws. Now, for a while, these were considered kind of a premium option, but the price on these motors have dropped recently, and I really urge you guys to look for these when you want to build a, a printer. It's, it gives you a much more accurate drive system for your Z-axis. Now you can also build this with a normal NEMA 17 motor, a coupler, and an 8mm lead screw, or an 8x8 lead screw, and that'll work okay. However, the couplers are spiral cut aluminum, and when they turn one way, they have a tendency to compress, and when they turn the other way, they have a potential for expanding. Now, it's not so pronounced on hypercubes because the weight of the bed is going to really push everything down and kind of keep everything you know, from really expanding or compressing. But there is a possibility that you're going to lose some of the movement of the motor as it turns to the right and to the left. And again, that could potentially lead to some Z artifacts or Z wobble or some kind of movement like that. And it pretty much just doesn't happen at all when you're using an integrated lead screw motor like this. Uh, again, they're not that much more expensive than the separate ones. And uh, it's really worth every penny. All right, let's start assembling our Z nut mounts. Uh, first off, they're going to be oriented like this when they're mounted in a frame. And the way I assemble them is by pushing the Z nut in from the bottom and making sure that they're aligned with the screw uh, with the holes in the actual plastic piece. The M3 by 10 screws go in right from the top and they thread into threads that uh, have been tapped into the actual Z nut. So what we're going to do is take a second and make sure all these are nice and snug in your parts and are all something like that. So go ahead and assemble it by adding the remaining three screws and then get these nice and tight. You know, these, uh, these can be really snug. Uh, they're not going to go anywhere and you're not going to have any kind of alignment problems with that. Okay, I assembled the Z nuts into the Z nut mount, so I've got four screws nice and tight into the threaded brass uh, 8x8 nuts. And I went ahead and also put some M5x10 screws through some T nuts, uh, kind of pre assembling them both so they're ready to go ahead and pop in. Uh, you're also going to need another M5x10 screw and T nut that's going to slide in from the top. And like so after you've kind of located them but you you don't need to pre-insert these they'll just kind of fall right through the little rectangle next we're going to pre-assemble our z motor mounts and z motors so the easiest way to do this is to just go ahead and stand one of them up and with the wires pointing towards this tab you're going to slide this over the motor until it locates on that center uh, raised part of the motor and then you're going to want to kind of look through it and make sure that you have your screw holes lined up and once you've done that you're going to grab a couple of M3 by 10 screws and kind of pass them through and you will go ahead and tighten those in place and the M3 by 10 screws are designed to go through the six millimeter thick plastic piece and the depth of the holes 
in the actual motors are about five millimeters deep, so they'll tighten up before they bottom out. So you can get these nice and snug, and uh, it'll be in good shape. It'll hold on nice, uh, nice and, and strongly there. Um, I do want to mention something. Some folks like to use Loctite to uh, secure metal screws into metal uh, objects like nuts or uh, the, the actual bodies of the stepper motors. Now, I don't recommend you do that. Some plastics have really, really negative uh, reactions to, uh, to Loctite. It's actually a, a fairly strong chemical. Like, for example, ABS ba basically turns into something that looks like feta cheese uh, once you expose it to, to blue Loctite and it'll crumble and fall apart really, really quickly. So uh, I have you know, assembled my printer and I have over 2,000 hours of printing on it now. I didn't use any Loctite. Just snugging all this down will hold everything together well and I haven't had anything come loose. I finished assembling the Z motor mounts. I have four M3 by 10 screws threaded through the plastic uh, motor mount into the actual stepper motor and I inserted two five by 10 uh, screws into the T-nuts and just tighten them down a little bit so they'll kind of keep the right orientation so I can just slide it right into the extrusion. And remember, make sure that you have your motor uh, wires or the plug for your motor, depending on which motor you get, facing towards this tab. And that'll help you kind of like tuck everything in nice and make it so uh, your wires are nice and hidden when you uh, route the wires and when we get everything hooked up uh, a little bit later on. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is mount the Z motor. And to do that, we're going to pass it through the frame and push it right in place like so. And it's going to be right in the middle between the two Z, uh, the Z rod mounts. And what I'm gonna do is just temporarily put this in place. So I'm gonna loosen my screws until I kind of hear them click. And then I'm gonna start turning them clockwise again to get the Z nut to turn and engage. But I'm not tightening this down at all. I'm literally just tightening it down until I feel the T nut engage and, and hold it in place. Very, very lightly. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Before we go any further, there's a couple things that we need to check. First of all, we have to kind of identify where the front of the machine actually is. And I know that this face is the actual front of the machine. The reason I know that is this distance here from the front edge of the machine to the upper Z-rod mount is shorter than the distance over here. And this distance was set with the tool that we used a little bit earlier when we were installing these components. It's very important that we do that. Uh, so that we understand that this is the front of the machine and as we build we hang everything in the right place because uh, in the next video we're going to put the XY motors, we're going to put the, uh, the Y rods and we're going to assemble the XY gantry across the top. So uh, as we do this uh, the next thing we're going to do is measure with the ruler the distance from your the back of your um, Z mount here, let's get, get it the right way around here, um, and measure the distance to the screw. And as I see it right now, it's about 5 and 1 16th in this direction, and about 5 and 3 eighths in this direction. So it's a little bit uh, too far over. So now if I move this over, to approximately, let's try five and a quarter. So that's five and a quarter right there. And we'll try the same measurement over here. It's five and a quarter. Yes, that is the center. So again, you want to have this lead screw centered between your Z rods. And that ensures that one side or the other side won't weigh more and kind of sag for any reason like that. Uh, it's really not much of an issue. I've seen some printers that were put together with this kind of off to one side a quarter of an inch or you know it's about six millimeters one way or the other and it printed fine. But you might as well help yourself out as much as you can and build the most precise machine possible. So again, uh, the distance I came up with is five and a quarter inches from the very edge of your lead screw to the very back of your Z carriage, your Z bearing carriage on each side. 
Once you've got that, I'm going to go ahead and snug these two screws down, locking that in place. And I'll do that on both sides. Okay, so now I've secured the Z motor mounts in place. Uh, the two screws that push it in from this direction are nice and snug, uh, or they're actually quite tight now because uh, I measured the distance and I know that the lead screw is centered in between the actual uh, lower Z rod mounts. Now what I'm going to do is take an M5 by 10 screw, put a T-nut on it, slide it into each one of these, push it all the way over to the side, and then secure these. We want these motor mounts to be very, very sturdy because they're going to be carrying the weight of your print bed and the frame, everything else, and whatever print you have. Uh, so we want to make sure that there's no chance of there being any kind of flexibility or any kind of movement in this particular part. Uh, this is a part that I have you know, pretty substantially beefed up compared to some of the other versions that are out there. So it's very, very snug and, and very solidly holds the motor in place. Once you've done this side, go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. All right, our next step is going to take our Z nut mounts and thread them onto our lead screws. Go ahead and run them down to they're pretty close to where they need to go. And we're going to do that on both sides. And get them about there. All right. Next thing we're going to do is raise the bed up slightly and there's just going to be enough give here to allow you to pop these into place on each side. Okay. And once you do that, go ahead and just run the bed all the way down until you just feel that the Z carriages are making contact with the lower Z rod mounts. And at that point, you don't want it to really be pushing down. You just want it to, again, just touch. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and take the screws that hold the Z nut, uh, the Z nut mounts uh, and loosen them. And again, turn them counterclockwise a little bit to make sure the T-nut turns. And then turn them clockwise to snug them down. And we're going to do a couple checks of alignment here before we get too much further. So I'm going to do the same thing on both sides. This Z-nut mount kind of self-aligns uh, because this beam is in a correct location, uh, the beam for the actual bed frame. Because that was uh, in a correct location because of the tool we used a bit earlier in the assembly process, everything's going to be aligned. Uh, so we don't really have to uh, do any checks to center this, this component. Because the Z motor mounts are centered between the lower Z rod mounts, and this is a fairly stiff um, lead screw, it's going to hold this in the center uh, of the actual bed frame, and all we need to do is go ahead and snug those parts down. Now the next thing we need to do is just kind of do a, a quick check of the alignment. And the way you do that it's going to be a little hard to kind of get in the video, but what you're going to do is sight down these rods along their length. Once you know that they're vertical, so the Z rod is vertically aligned with the lead screws, so, you know, that's ensuring that everything's right. Um, you can go ahead and drop the screws in from the top, the M5 by 10 screws with the T-nuts, and, and go ahead and tighten those down, and then you can finish tightening these down. Now, if for any reason, you have any kind of misalignment where this screw is really pushing in one way or pushing the other direction, what you're going to need to do is loosen the two M5 by 8 screws that are in the corner brackets here and here, and then allow this beam to move uh, you know, in this direction, and then that's going to allow the lead screw to, you know, to be you know, vertical. Now again, usually that's not necessary as long as you use the tool to assemble the frame. And once that's done, you know, as in this case now, everything's aligned properly. All we need to do is drop the M5 by 10 screws through the top with the, uh, with the T-nuts on there, tighten them down, and then that assembly is complete. Okay, so I have some M5 by 10 screws and T-nuts. I'm dropping them in through the top of these slots on the Z nut mounts. And I'm taking a second to try to center them as best as I can uh, above that little 
rectangle that they fall through to ensure that they uh, clamp good and they're nice and straight. And as always, whenever you're working with 2020 extrusions and T-nuts, make sure that you are checking that the T-nut the or hammer nut is actually turning in the frame so that you're getting your maximum clamping force. And yes, I can see that both of the T-nuts have turned. You're gonna wanna take a minute and take these uh, Z-rods, mark them because if you look, they're actually sticking out of the bottom a little bit, okay? Mark those and then cut them off. Um, a hacksaw will do nothing to these. Uh, neither will band saws, metal band saws or anything like that. Nothing will happen other than you'll wipe a blade out. So when you're cutting these, you're gonna wanna use an abrasive cutoff wheel on an angle grinder or uh, a Dremel tool. The Dremel tool will take a while, uh, but it will get through them. Uh, the best tool for the job is, uh, is an angle grinder with an abrasive cutoff wheel. Uh, I got mine for Harbor Freight for about $15, $20. I think, I think it was more, more like $15. And uh, I've had it for a couple years. It works great. And, uh, you know, it'll literally go through one of these rods in seconds. Um, make some impressive sparks, too. All right. So next time, uh, we're going to go ahead and start installing the Y-axis rods. We're going to install the motor mounts and the XY stepper motors. And then after we do that, we will assemble the XY carriage and the carbon fiber rods. See you then.